Okay, one of the ways, the other ways you can do addition and reinforce uh, place value, the way Gitanio does it, is using uh, what I call the Gitanio place value chart. Sometimes it's called the Gitanio wall chart, the Gitanio chart, the Gitanio tens chart. It all, it's the same thing. It's just this uh, chart here and we have it broken down and we can count up to a million on here and sometimes you'll see it the same chart and it'll go to decimals. I just, we haven't introduced decimals so I don't see any reason to put it on the chart right now. You can get a copy of this chart. We'll put a link below in the video description. So when we're going to start with the Gitanio chart, we're going to start by counting right here and we're going to start counting I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And when I do this with my student, I'm going to just point with a pointer or a pen or something like that. And the student will read the numbers. And then I will point to the 10 and then the one. So we'll do this. We'll say 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Now once we get to 19, we're going to come down here and do the next one in the row, which will be 20. Now the 20s are easier than the 10 numbers or the teen numbers. 20 makes a little bit more sense. This 11, 12, the way we have our numbers in English um, don't really, aren't very helpful in the in the teen numbers. Once you get to 20, 20 and 30 aren't, act, don't follow the pattern either. It's uh, 20, it's not 2T or 3T, it's 20 and 30. 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Those make a little more sense. 50 is a little bit off because we don't say 5T, but it's much closer than 11, 12 and 13, which make no sense whatsoever, but that's where our numbers are. And so if you're, your student wanted to say 1T1, 1T2, 1T3, 1T4. I don't have a problem with it when they're little. They'll just have to come, um, as they get older, they'll have to come to an understanding of what those numbers are. So when we get to 20, we're going 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and then 30. Now this helps students as they come to understand what it is in ordering numbers and understanding place value, particularly when it comes to adding. So now that we've counted, well, let's just count a couple high numbers. We would say, uh, we will point, let's say we'll do 2,304, 2,305, 2,306, 2,307, 2,308, 2,309, 2,300, and now we're going to start at this row from the very beginning, 2,310, 2,311, 2,312. Now, I wouldn't go through them one to a million, obviously in order, but we want to pick something we're going to count forward, 444, 443, when we count forward, sorry, 445, 446, 446, and then we would want to count backwards, 444, 443, 442, 441, and then where do we go? So we would go, so what happens? So we have to go back here, 439. So we go to this one, and then here we start backwards and go down this row. So we want to practice counting forwards and backwards. And with the teacher touching each number and the student reading, we get up to the thousand numbers. We would do how I do it is the pattern is 333, and then I will touch the comma. So 333,000, 3, So we would read the comma. 444,444. Now how we're going to add on the Gitanio chart is actually pretty easy. So let's say we have something like uh, 453. And we want to add to that 220, I don't know, 
let's do 229. So we're going to just count on the chart and see what happens. So we're going to add 239. So at 400, we're going to do the 400s first. Or we're going to do the, not 400s first, we'll do the 100s first. So we're going to count up 200. So we're at 400 and we're going to add 200 to our 400. So we'll be moving this arrow. If we had a counter, we would just put it there. But so we'll just move this arrow to 400. We counted up two. And then we have a 30. So we're going to move this arrow one, two, three. And then we have to move this one nine spaces to 239. So let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now we don't go here, eight, nine. That's not how we count it. We go here. And once we get here, we have to go back to this row. So we had seven. So over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're going to have a, an arrow there, but we're also going to have an arrow here. So we can look, and we have in our tens row right here, we can see we have eight tens plus one ten over here. We have two units and we have six of the hundreds. So, so these tens have to be added together. So we're gonna just erase this one. I'm gonna select this one and we can, here we are. We're at, well, let's just, with this one here, we need to do the eight tens plus one ten. So 80 plus 10 is 90 and we can get rid of this extra one over here and just delete that. So we have 692. You can do another one. Well, let's, I will just move them. Let's do 350, let's do seven, 357 and let's add, uh, let's, Let's add to that, I'm gonna write it up top so I don't forget it this time. Uh, I want it to go to the thousand, so let's make it 800 and 20, and let's do four. So, at this one, and we have, we're going to add eight hundreds to our already three hundreds. So let's count them: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So we have one of these and one of these, and then. We have to add the 20. So we just have this one and we can go move it one, two. Ah, we can erase the one that's here though. Move that one too. And now we have this four. And we have to add four to seven. So we'll go one, two, three, and four. So we're going to have one here and one here. So in this row, so we have 1,100. And here in this row, again, we have two of these tens. We're going to have to combine them. So seven tens plus one ten is going to give us eight tens. We'll just put that here. Not sure why these are not erasing, but we will go. Here we go. So our answer is 1,181. So we use, when we do it at our house, we do markers. And we have these little glass balls. 
and we just put them on the table and we just come up with um, addition facts or addition problems and we just do them on here where I would put arrows we have little markers because they're super easy to see and if we have two of them in a row we just add them together so he would know um, if we hit if we had to go do this row we would have to pull up another marker for the thousand and then put another one over here by 100 and I think that's all I have to say for right now about the Catania chart. But the Catania chart is really pretty fascinating deal and it's useful for all kinds of things. And if you read my blog post, which is linked at the bottom of this video, you can see some of the things uh, that I talk about that we can do on the Catania chart.